Hey, it's Alex Williams of the New Stack here today with David Dennis, Vice President of Product Marketing at Benami. Hey, David, how are you? I'm good, Alex. Uh, getting ready for the Christmas vacation, but doing great. I know we're here at the tail end of the year, and to mark that uh, end of the year, we're going to look at how Bitnami is really investing in these new sophisticated, really these multi-tier templates. And one of the things that we're seeing is like how the layers really can help you develop these sophisticated applications, right? So like, you know, and, 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 and as you were describing to me, you have partners who have templates. And then Bitnami has developed this master template that can integrate these different templates from these third party providers. Yeah, so when you look at cloud providers like you know, Amazon or um, Azure, Microsoft Azure, they both have a, a mechanism, and they call them different names, to deploy multi-tier applications. In the case of Amazon, it's called a cloud formation template, and in the case of Microsoft Azure, it's called the Azure Resource Manager. Um, what we've done at Bitnami, basically, is because we have to make multi-tier applications that are capable of basically running the same way and being configured the same way, regardless of which cloud you're on, we had to kind of make, if you will, kind of a meta definition of, of what that looks like. And that doesn't really matter to the end user so much, ex except for the fact that if you run a multi-tier application on one cloud and you run that same old Bitnami multi-tier application on another cloud, the experience is gonna be the same. Um, and what we do in this case is we've made a several different kinds of topologies depending on the applications. So for example, for Jenkins, we have a clustered Jenkins set. In the case of um, MongoDB, which we'll be talking about today, we have a MongoDB replica set. And there's other ones that are forthcoming. The, the purpose of these basically is, is twofold. One is what you're trying to get to is you're trying to get to the beyond a single VM. You're trying to make a, a version of the application that either provides some scalability or some fault tolerance that you would get when you use the more sophisticated topologies. You could always have done this by hand. What we've really done this year though by investing in this is we're taking that kind of single click to deploy experience that you can have with a single VM and now we're gonna say, okay, we're gonna give you that same ease of setup but apply it to a, a multi-tier application. Interesting. And you have prepared a slide that demonstrates what you're talking about. Isn't that right, David? And then you're going to show us a demo? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. And Alex, you should be able to see my screen. Yeah, I see it. Great. Okay. That's the dashboard. We're going to come back to that in a minute here. Um, so what this slide here shows is that in the case of MongoDB, we're implementing what's called a MongoDB replica set. And so you have a primary and a secondary node, and these two basically replicate the data from one another. It's kind of like in a, in a uh, array to array, you have you know, duplication of the data set. And then over here, you have this guy who's the arbiter, and you'll notice that he's a much smaller instance. You can see here that, that the actual instances running the database are larger, you know, they're high mem instances. And this guy who's the arbiter is just a little micro instance. All he does basically is act as a traffic cop so that if one of these two guys, you know, fails, they can elect the other guy as the leader. But the point is now is that you've got three different uh, database servers running simultaneously. If you were to try to set this up by hand, um, and we know this because we had to, you know, do it in the course of making this template, uh, it, it takes you a better part of a day or maybe a little bit longer when you account for the, the time it takes to spin up servers. Mm -hmm. So what we have here now is the Microsoft Azure dashboard. And we actually have two things going on here. We've got Redash, which is a open source visualization tool, which can be used to visualize both SQL and no SQL data. We won't be doing a lot with it today, but it is part of the solution set that you'll wanna have running. And we just have it already deployed here. And this guy here, this is, this is the MongoDB replica set that we have running here. And okay. So go in here and boom, we've got all these machines and other components that are already instrumented. And we'll show you uh, real quickly how to set that up too. So if I'm gonna go ahead and set this puppy up, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the Azure Marketplace. 
and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to search on Bitnami Mongo. And it would help if I would spell better. Okay. Uh, so this is all in the Azure marketplace and then so people can go directly to this. Yeah, exactly. Right. Um, and we'll go ahead and be easier to actually search on Mongo. Uh, MongoDB. Apparently the Azure uh, search engine has to be exactly what you're searching for. Uh, so you see right here is the one we want, which is the MongoDB with, with replica sets. Okay. So I'm gonna show you um, all the steps you have to go through to set this guy up. We'll stop short of actually booting it because that'll actually take a while but right. to show how, how easy it is. So we'll go ahead and we're gonna create this and see here it says select a deployment model and it already has resource manager meaning an Azure Resource Manager template is already defined as, as the method we want to use. So we just need to go ahead here and we're going to you know, just give it a name and call it like, you know, new Mongo. And then we're going to, at this point, I would paste in my uh, SSH public key. I'm not going to do that right now in the middle of a recording. So <laughs> otherwise people would, you know, know what it is. And, and then you click OK, and then it actually deploys. And that's it. Those are all the steps. The VMs, wow. all, yeah, that's it. Um, and, when it's, and then it takes about you know, uh, you know, 15, 20 minutes to actually boot up. Uh -huh. And when it's done, you get these guys. Now, here's the other cool part that, that is pretty impressive. So you say, OK, I'm going to be running this in you know, production, or at least you know, some level of importance. I want to add monitoring to this. Like, you know, how do I to go ahead and do it? And you go in here to extensions, and you're going to find a whole bunch of extensions that are available here. So we have a lot of them are monitoring based, but you also have backups and things like that. Um, and in the case of Datadog, you go in here, and I've already deployed it, but all it asks for is the API key from my Datadog account. And if you go through Datadog, if you go through their wizards, it gives you that. Um, so all you do is paste that in there and you hit OK and then it goes and it, it'll go ahead and, and link it up and then the last step that you have to do which is you know, the, the only one that's even slightly difficult is that you got to expand this a little bit here. Let's make this bigger. It's not um, you have to go into a configuration file that Datadog uses, and it's in this directory. Mm -hmm. And actually, this and then this subdirectory. Boom. Okay. Mm. See all these YAML files. These yeah. are basically plugins for oh, wow. uh, Datadog uses. And if you look at the example, so we're going to look at the Mongo example here. And all you got to do is this line here where we say it just needs a username, password, and a port to go ahead and, you know, configure the Mongo specific agent to be running. Now, I've actually already done that. So we'll, you'll, you'll want to make a copy of the example and then you'll edit it. And in my particular case, this is what we got. And so I made a user called Datadog. And he has the password monitoring is awesome. Nice. And he's going through a local host port, which is the standard one here, which is okay. You just use that one. Um, that's it. And once this guy is up and running, we can, and this is one of the really cool things about Datadog, is that Datadog actually already automatically creates the dashboards for the custom metrics. What's also pretty interesting is that even though I didn't do anything special to configure Redash, because of the way that it's using, uh, the, the mechanism that Redash is using, um, Datadog already actually pets up custom metrics for Redash anyway. And then you go in here at Mongo and you should be able to see that I've had this guy up and running for a while and there's gonna be a bunch of, you know, read and write kind of, you know, database type statistics that we have going on here for MongoDB. So the, it so auto, the, it auto, auto populates and, and that's it. You're up, and, you're up and ready to roll and just start uploading the data and hooking it all together. So the idea is that this could be any third party provider. Yeah, I just, I just happened to use Datadog mm -hmm. because, you know, I, I'm familiar right. with 
data dog and I know how it worked. But if you go back here to this extensions page, um, there were a bunch of other of these guys here, right? right. So if, if you happen to be using BMC or you happen to be using, you know, Dynatrace, you know, those are the ones that are built into Azure already, right? Okay. So if you compare that to, you know, what we used to have to do, which is we used to have to go, oh my God, I'm going to go stick in like Nagios, for example, on every single thing I want to monitor. Uh -huh. Figure Nagios and, you know, we use, uh -huh. that alone would take the better part of a day, right? So we've taken the two parts, which is how do I configure the cluster application? And I've made that into one click. And then how do I add monitoring? And I've made that down to like, you know, two clicks and a file edit, right? Uh. <laughs> And so when you get all this done, you're like, okay, I am now up and running in a production ready environment with MongoDB and it's being monitored and I have Redash there and it's all have been done in, you know, in less than an hour, right? Wow. And actually, a lot of that hour time is, you know, sitting around getting some coffee waiting for the servers to spin up. In terms of, you know, my human time, it's probably 15 minutes. So you use the language replica then. So mm -hmm. what, what does the language mean for you in that, in that respect, replica? In the case of Mongo, it's, it's literally a redundant copy of the database. So if we, okay. we get, get back here and we go back to this list. So this is a, a resource group I have here. And you see this guy, this mm -hmm. zero, he's, he's the primary database. Right. This guy, DB1, he's a duplicate okay. of him. And then this last guy, DB2, he's the arbiter. He's the one that is ah, okay. paying attention to the health status of the first two guys, right? Ah. So, so DB0 and DB1, um, DB0 is writing copies of all of his data to DB1. So he's replicating it that way. And so that then is, is you know, part of the, you know, why you can you know, be more sophisticated in how you compose these layers, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you've, you've got now a, a fully redundant, you know, setup going on here in terms of, you know, even within my particular zone, I've got a database backing up to another database. And if one of them fails, the arbiter is going to select the other guy to be the new boss so that I can keep up and running whatever other applications I might have who are dependent upon it that are talking to it. They shouldn't notice the fact that if one of the replicas died, right, it, it should be fault tolerant at that point. So is this a methodology that uh, Bitnami has, uh, has, you know, how, how has this methodology evolved and, and where, how do you see it, um, you know, continuing to, to unfold, you know, in the, in the, you know, in the next several months or year ahead? Well, the, the thing to remember here is, you know, we didn't, we didn't invent the concept of replica sets from Mongo. That's, that's a, that's a deployment topology that Mongo supports. Right? Yeah, I'm thinking more of yeah. your overall methodology that you're, that you're showing here. In, uh, in the yeah, our, our goal is basically to take all the more sophisticated topologies that are used by the most popular applications that are in the Bitnami catalog and make these kind of one-click multi-tier uh, templates for all the cloud providers mm -hmm. that we support, right? So again, kind of rolling it back, we want to get to the point where deploying a sophisticated topology is just as easy as deploying a single VM. And that evolves from Bitnami's roots, really, you know, when being... You know, so, uh, so, you know, such a, a uh, you know, for why, why you fit with, you know, these different cloud services and the marketplaces that you've helped them develop. Yeah, exactly. So this comes about the fact that, one, we we're intimately familiar with the different cloud services and the differences between them. And we're also intimately familiar with their multi-tier deployment mechanisms, things like CloudFormation templates, things like ARM. And... On top of all that, we're intimately familiar with all the applications we have in our catalog, right? So to, so to make this all work, you have to know the apps inside and out in terms of what they need to run, what they need to do these kind of scale out kind of models. And then you have to know on the cloud provider side, you say, okay, if I want to make a multi-server version of a given app, well, what does that mean in terms of Azure? What does that mean in terms of you know, Amazon? What does that mean in terms of Google? And we have all of that expertise. And we've now made it available to everybody so that basically they don't have to learn that stuff. You know, they can just use it as is. So what are the use cases then that we now see out of, uh, out of this approach? We actually, uh, it's not just theoretical. We actually are seeing usage now of our multi-tier templates. Mm -hmm. um, in particular, the one we're showing today, um, multi-tier Mongo is actually uh, one of our top performing 
multi-tier applications. But we also have, you know, we have a whole list of, and I, we, we can provide this to you as supplementing material when we're done here, of, you know, there's, there's more than 20 other applications that we already have. There's multi-tier WordPress, we have you know, Jenkins that we talked about, which is a, a clustered version. Um, these are already being discovered by people on the marketplaces and people already deploying them. Hmm. And, and they're keep, this is the other part of it too, is they're keeping them up and running. You know, one of the things about um, a more sophisticated topology is the people using it tend to be people who are, you know, they're doing something real, right? You, you don't tend to bother with saying, oh, I'm gonna deploy a, a multi-server version of a database unless you know, you're doing something that's you know, business critical or, or production oriented. If you're just kind of playing with it or just sort of prototyping something, you, you wouldn't bother to go to that step. So the fact that we're seeing this kind of uptake means that the people who are using them are using them in a, in a real serious business critical way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, to create these, these sophisticated uh, topologies, tell us a little bit about, you know, the Bitnami architecture itself and, and how that plays into this. Yeah, there's, we actually have behind the scenes, there's something called a, a NAMI module. Um, and without, you know, getting into too many hairy details, you can think of a NAMI module as kind of an abstraction layer for an application configuration and, you know, deployment mechanism, right? Where we're able to define without being specific to any particular cloud, like in this case of an architecture, we have to say, okay, you know, if I'm going to deploy three Mongo servers, they need to have these particular ports, they need to have these particular uh, permissions, they need to have these particular kinds of users and all of the other stuff that's under the hood that are dependent upon the application, but not particular dependent on the particular cloud, right? And so these, these NAMIA modules define at sort of a meta level, well, what's the application architecture independent of where it's running? And we spend a lot of time building those. And then the NAMI modules are sort of, if you will, sort of the, the root that gets then turned into ARM templates and CloudFormation templates and things like that. Mm. So that's your engine, really. Yeah, that's, that's really our behind the scenes, you know, secret sauce configuration engines. Yeah, we're, mm. we're not, we're not you know, micromanaging and hand tooling them one by one. There's actually, it's actually part of our tool chain and the NAMI modules are, are in essence the, the definition of the desired state that you're trying to get to. And that again dates back to your roots really and, you know, uh, and helping uh, people in, in earlier days build out these virtual machine infrastructures. It does, although the NAMI modules themselves, that particular piece of technology is a little bit newer. Mm -hmm. because, okay, because uh, this requires more sophistication. Because it requires more sophistication, yeah. exactly. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Well, David, this has been really interesting for me. Thank you very much for taking the time to Great. discuss, you know, how a bit NAMI is providing this more sophisticated composition and, you know, increasingly as uh, people in business critical environments are needing to create more sophisticated layering in their applications and look forward to learning more about your progress in this, this realm in the year ahead. Thank you very much. Absolutely.